Well, good morning all and happy Motivation Monday. As you all know, today we're going to talk about referrals and referrals are an important part of our business. So I thought we could do some refresher before we jump into open enrollment sales. Thought we would um, start with a quote by Jim Rohn, who was an American entrepreneur, author, motivational speaker as well. One customer well taken care of could be more valuable than $10,000 worth of advertising. This is the truth. As we know, clients want to work with someone who is knowledgeable, professional, and fun. So with that being said, happy Motivation Monday. Well, as usual, here's the layout that we will follow. I have some um, received some pretty positive feedback from you all about this. Um, if you have any other ideas, please feel you know feel free to reach out, give us some feedback. Um, this is for your benefit, and we're very flexible. We do start with product systems or product tips of the week. Um, any you know important dates coming up? We did hear some news on the re uh, recent changes with Aetna this last week. So you know, definitely feel free to reach out to agency services if you haven't heard or need some further information. And then uh, we do go through the AHCP trends and sales as well as products you know that were sold. I like to throw out those sales kudos and shout outs uh, to those agents who were you know rocking with their sales for the last week. And then to end and wrap things up, we do finish with sales techniques um, or tips. And this week, as we said, it'll be tips for building the referral bases. So last week's tip of the week was um, in regards to you know, the 2017 health savings account limits uh, for individuals is $3,400. It is up $50 from 2016. Um, Although family coverage, there is no change for, um, for this coming year. So it is the same as 2016. And then also, you have Medicare open enrollment coming up uh, October 15th through December 7th. So if you're interested in doing those Medicare sales, please feel free um, to make sure that you get your certification. You can complete your federal training online. Um, it takes about five hours to do. And um, you know you can check it out. There is a site that I do recommend to people because it's really affordable and easy uh, training online. It's AD Banker, and that website is www.adbanker.com. The course is estimated um, to take about two to three hours, and the fees for the course is about $49.95. So pretty affordable for the most part. And then also just want to reiterate with the new changes with NHIC, um, now National General Short Term. We do have new training videos posted online, um, and you can find those at ahcpsales.com under training. And you click on the pre-recorded training library, and then you'll find it's located in there. And then also a reminder um, for the state of Montana, it does require an SEP certification. You can go on nipr.com um, for the online certification applications. Um, easy to find in there. Definitely, you know, make sure that if you're licensed in Montana and plan to do any sales in there, you get that certification taken care of. So this week's tip of the week is going to be about Fidelity eTerm Express. Um, it does have electronic enrollment. There's no need for laboratory testings. Um, no attending physicals or medical records um, needed. It has instant underwriting decision um, when the policy is issued. It takes about 20 minutes to 30 minutes uh, for the process. Your customers do need to be able to access a computer um, because it is uh, e-signature on there. It has um, some great, you know, competitive rates as well as some competitive commissions. And then you can write up to uh, face amounts up to 500000 depending on the age. It is paperless straight through. I do want to make sure that's um, reiterated, you know, with the electronic signatures. And they do need to make sure that they are going through um, watching the medical questions. Uh, they do run things through the MIB and MVR as well as pharmacy record check. So, you know, they will, they will definitely find out if the customer is taking that blood pressure medication and they say they're not. 
Um, and you know, with that, it's it's pretty easy. They have three rates depending on the medical questions. Um, you know, if they do have something going on with like blood pressure medication, then it may fall in, fall into a certain rate versus an, um, another one. It is available in all states except for Maine, Montana, New York, Vermont, and Wyoming. Wide availability there. Okay. And we're going to move into AHCP trends. Um, for AHCP sales trends, you know, it's, it's been a decent week to say the least. Uh, this last week we did see some short-term medical sales slightly down, um, but still one of the top pr products for the sales. Uh, so where major medical stops, you know, short-term are picking up, we saw about a 51% increase in, medical, in the short-term medical sales. Um, you know, the week before this week, it seems to kind of, uh, you know, kind of stabilized a little bit more. Um, but please, you know, it's kind of mind-boggling to, to really realize how much it's, it's really increased and picked up. Uh, remember, it is out there, so if you don't have, you know, uh, to turn away those customers that might have some, you know, possible issues, there is that NHIC uh, interim care guaranteed issue product. Um, if somebody does have health concern, you know they do have the guaranteed issue available, um, and it's very pricey and competitive. Um, you know, w compared to some of the other short terms out there. So if you have a 40-year-old in Chicago that uh, with a 10,000 max out-of-pocket guaranteed, you know, issue, the premium is about 30, $311. Um, a non-guaranteed issue with about 87 um, max out-of-pocket is about $293, so really around $20 more for the guaranteed issue, um, and that's not a huge, vast difference. It is out there, so keep that tool in your tool belt if you ever need to turn to it. Um, and then there was a slight decrease for major medical. Uh, the sales that we did see with the major medical was top selling for Golden Rule off exchange. It was the top seller this week. And then uh, we saw an increase in the accident um, sales with accident sales. It was the top seller was General Agent Center VBA. Uh, accident, you know, sales slightly up this week. Um, you are remembering that 80% of claims are accident, and so you are adding that you know value to your accident plans. One thing to keep in mind is that if somebody has children, you're doing them a disservice by not, you know, if you let them leave without that accident plan. Kids are quite accident prone. So if you have any plans with younger families, this should be a great option for them to add um, just for their security and peace of mind for protection. And then we did see a nice increase of critical illness uh, sales. Um, Colorado Bankers Life was the top carrier. And then also a small decrease with dental sales this last week, which I've noticed kind of a pattern. When there's a decrease in major medical, dental seems to follow, which tells me you guys are doing a great job with um, doing package sales of offering dental with a major medical. Although, again, uh, General Agent Center is on the board um, as the top carrier for those dental products, though. So we're going to move into the kudos sales shoutouts. Um, this week for sales shoutouts was Brian Jarovich. Um, he's been on the board a couple times the last few weeks. And his top sales were with NHIC short term, uh, the Trio Med and Axiomed. And then he had David Taxer also with NHIC short term as well as the Axiomed. So they're doing a great job with um, package, you know, selling um, with the accident for those short term plans. And then we had Jacob Gordon who was doing fantastic with his Golden Rule Dental sales as well as some short term. And then Mitchell McKay. Uh, Mitchell McKay did some great accident sales through AIG had some really nice policies written there, as well as some critical illness sales through Colorado Bankers Life. And Laura Smith with some golden rule short term as well as general agent center accident plans. So good job, kudos to those agents. So finally, the sales tips. Um, as you already know, that referral selling can give your business the boost that it needs. This week, I want to talk about referrals and some tips you can take this week to start building the referral base. In fact, people would rather do business with people they know um, than strangers. So 
when you're introduced to a prospect um, through a personal recommendation, that prospect is vastly higher um, with their comfort level than, say, a buyer that you found through a call, cold call. After all, a few things are more reassuring than a positive endorsement from someone you know and trust. Uh, they close at a much higher rate, honestly, between 60 to 70 percent uh, close on almost any referral lead. So, you know, those to be, um, those are considered to be a little bit more of a guaranteed uh, sale, you know, is the best way to look at it. Also, because when you get that referral, it means you're doing something right. Referrals should be a stead part of your business. I'd like to look at an average of about 10 to 20 percent of your business to be from referrals. So first off, I would like to um, go first tip. It seems pretty obvious, um, but that's an area that I have to, you know, kind of cover the most with agents before we can get into the referral techniques. Uh, be worthy of your referrals. You know, if you're not worthy of it, if you're not doing a quality job, not giving accurate information, no one will want to work with you. You need to be a solid agent before you can really start thinking up too much about referrals or you're going to tank your reputation. So being worthy means a few things. People want to work with people who are knowledgeable, professional, and fun. They want to work with an agent who thinks they're listening to their needs and with an agent who can fix their problems. You need to be that agent. You need to be the professional and trustworthy with the most important thing to these people, their family, um, health, as well as their financial security um, in case something really bad happens. Also, because of this, you have to give accurate advice every time. One thing to keep in mind is that you have resources um, if you're working with AHCP. If you have a product-specific question, don't ever hesitate to reach out. Use all the resources you can get your clients answers to them every time. And working with existing clients. So divided into uh, three different main categories. The first one is um, working with your existing clients. People have already, you know, that you've already sold to are pleased with your service. Um, when you first started, you know, who was your first customer? Usually your friends and family. They are great resources to ask first if they have any friends they'd refer. Second, your clients, you are in the process or just sold that moment. Um, definitely, you know, ask them. They, you know, basically felt comfortable enough to make that sale with you. And third is your community networking. When you're going, um, you know, when, are, when we're going to start with the, you know, um, adding that sales process, uh, you know, externally. So we'll cover that in just a little bit. And then, you know, going through, when you sell them, let them know you'll be following up. Um, that is huge. It's, it gives them that kind of comfort and peace of mind. It seems pretty obvious to let them know that, you know, you'll be following up. But, you know, following up usually within 14 days after the sale and then a month into having the plan. And then if there's a termination, say it's a short-term medical. On all those different contact points, you can ask them for a referral. Don't be shy. They may have questions also. That means you need to, you know, have the answer. So for that 14-day, you know, mark after that purchase call, make sure they're getting all the materials and see if they have any additional questions. Um, also check to see if they have got contacted by underwriting and if they need any help with anything. And then just keep the conversation sweet. But this might be a good time to check to see if they um, have anyone in a similar situation that they think you should reach out to. For 30 days in, usually nothing can go wrong at that point, so you can call again. See if they have any questions again. Again, ask if they have anyone that they know that might have insurance. Um, the last one is my favorite because you can see how things went and you can get that feedback in your sales process. Don't hesitate to ask. Maybe there's something missing for you, um, you know, giving outstanding service and this client may be able to help you with it. And then let them know who you want to work with um, is, a, is a really big one. Never hesitate in the end that, you know, you have um, an ideal client that you, you know, that 
you're somebody I like to work with and I'm looking for more clients like you. You know, a compliment is, is great, number one, but it also kind of lets them know that you're looking for more people like them too. Um, you know, wouldn't be surprised how many people have referrals but don't know if um, you'd want to work with them. Now, if you're building a solid brand around yourself, which is something we're going to talk about in a few weeks, you can tell your clients who you are looking for, you know, to work with. Um, I suspect in small business owners, families uh, with young children, people who've recently moved, etc. Um, you know, just you need that brand to let them know who you want to work with. If you can set the boundaries, they'll try and fill it in. And then also add a hyperlink to your signature. One thing to um, do is add that hyperlink in your email on any follow-up email you send with a line of customers like, you know, you are the customer I'm looking for. Um, if you know of anyone who is looking for insurance, give them my contact information or click here to give me their information. What's important in a hyperlink is to give, give some guidance. Sometimes I put my information in the subject line because it's that easy, you know, it's that easy in a hyperlink. I can, can't tell you how many times agents I talk to get a referral, but all they get is a name. I'll help you with a number or email address. So if your client lets you know if somebody um, lets you know of somebody, make sure you know what they need and don't be afraid to have a conversation about the person about that person. And then let them know how you're going to handle it. Um, you know, it's important to to let your clients know that you're professional and that you'll handle this information confidentially. Reach out to your previous business, check on how they're look for and again, let them know at the beginning you're going to be reaching out. And just some small add-ins to your business process. So things you can do while you're selling or for clients you uh, just sold to. First off, let them know you'll be asking for that referral in the beginning. One of my favorite things would be a line like, oh, so who referred you to me? Oh, no? Well, most of my clients are referrals. That's why I ask. You're up the stage to let them know about the word referral and trust me it will be in the back of their mind let them know you'll be asking them in that be in the beginning um, you know go through add some small value based statements throughout your process to let them feel that it's normal to give a referral um, well it seems you know when I talk to one person in Portland it seems they send all their friends to me or yeah I have actually a lot of um, when one calls in, he usually gives everyone my contact information. Really commonly, really common actually. Anything that can make it the client feel like they're not the only one, and that it's normal, everyone does it. People don't like feeling like the odd one out. So try and make sure that they feel comfortable, that it's normal, that you know everybody out there is doing it. People. Like you know, kind of go with the flow of things. And then also, you know, let them know who you want to be working with. Again, you need to let them know who you're looking for. If it's just, you know, give me a name, uh, who knows, maybe you'll get a Medicare person and somebody who is just unhappy with their group plan. Um, and if you're not licensed in Medicare, that's not going to help you. Um, give them some boundaries. It's kind of like a built-in filter for you. And then at the end. Now is the best time to actually ask for it. You should have been dropping hints through the whole process. It is immediately after the sale. Who do they know um, like them in their situation? You know, Maybe they lost insurance or they're a small business owner. Um, who do they know that's looking for insurance? That customer feels good about selecting you and your product. At, the, at that point, the customer is not going to view you as a salesperson but as a resource who just provided them some valuable service, so you've solved their problems. Don't feel sheepish about asking for referrals. There's nothing pushy or schmarmy about it. People won't give you a referral unless you actually deserve them. So in fact, you know, in fact getting a referral is a really high compliment um, that you can receive. Let your customers know you prize that referral, which you'll earn you know, by providing excellent quality 
products as well as service to them. Again, ask for the referral is not begging. It's just education to the customer about what you are looking for in potential customers. Again, looking for somebody with the same type of issues. And, you know, just another thing, it's also okay to let them know that, you know, when you're following up, hey, don't keep me a secret. You know, it's um, finding a, you know, quick little easy way to say that phrase, don't keep me a secret. You know, for you. Add it into your signature too if you want, or instead um, of a thank you or the you know kindest in your emails, let them know that referrals are important and that they can you know tell people about you. And then just you know working externally um, to build those leads, you know how to get those customers, um, you know doing that referral base externally. Now you know these are the most harder ways to get you know those customers um, I like to think most people are uncomfortable about it but again you know like Thomas Edison said some people are more afraid of work because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work so find a referral partner in some similar industries um, you know find somebody who's uh, you know be able to create that referral process with look for somebody who you know works in auto insurance or a special type someone who works with people who have um, special you know enrollment uh, opportunities like lawyers for divorce um, or lawyers in general who create you know help help people with wills um, those are great ones because then they're interested in maybe some life they actually have some value in taking care of their families as well so lawyers are a great one to definitely you know reach out to see if um, you know you can create kind of a, a opportunity to partner and then uh, create a system for those referrals. Give these people your business cards, and then you'll be having to, you know, uh, be willing to give and get. This isn't something where you can just walk in and ask for free. These are things where, you know, people won't go along with it. You, you need to be able to give them something for it. Tell them what you can do for them and why they should help you. Um, hosting seminars. Here's an interesting one. Host a seminar. So I all the time for our financial or life seminars um, and community buildings, apartment buildings, or even community groups. I've, you know, even seen um, just like our local little bookstore um, posted, you know, want to learn more about Medicare options. You know, that's a great opportunity to be able to bring somebody in, be able to educate them, and then be able to, you know, build that, that kind of trust with them. Um, it's a great way to attract people um, that you're looking so this should be fairly inexpensive, a plate of cookies, a case of water, you know, maybe some tea. Uh, you can check the community organizers uh, that would be willing to contact people in their group for you maybe. Uh, again, you need to know who you want to attract though. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, for uh, my local town, we have a little rotary club that d does business connections, so it's a great opportunity, obviously, for um, everybody that's going to be a little town but definitely make sure that you reach out and um, see what's available to you in your in your area community and then being able to network with small businesses um, local small businesses you know how are people supposed to know about you you know do an email blast uh, do a little bit of work but if you have the opportunity to meet people face to face that's also pretty powerful so you know check to see what sort of um, small businesses local businesses around your area that to you know definitely work with you and then referral links on your websites if you don't have it yet add a referral link to your website everyone should have this it is highly important give them the opportunity to feed somebody to you it's just a you know they're doing the work for you they're helping you out with giving you that opportunity and then email signatures again add it to your email powerful even something short like don't keep me a secret let me help your friends and family click here for a referral form those are very powerful to add into email signatures and definitely the steps that you want to make sure that you're taking now that you have in place now that you're you know taking the opportunity um, to you know to take advantage of not let slip through the cracks you know be aware 
general knowledgeable, make sure you're, you know, fun to work with, um, you're knowing, you know, about your products and how to, to help those customers. And then adding that referral link to your signature, highly important. Um, let them do the work for you, let them feed you. Okay, and then create a list of people um, or communities that you know that you want to definitely get in front of. And let your sales today know that you'll be following up. Remember that they mark up and give them that opportunity to give you some feedback and then ask them who else they might know in a similar situation that might be looking for insurance. And then create a list of referral partners um, and a system to connect with them. You know, how are you going to go out? You know, maybe calling ahead of time and seeing if you can maybe schedule just a half hour meeting with them to do an introduction and then maybe see if there's some way that you might be able to um, Okay, so that kind of brings us to the end of this week's Motivation Monday. Um, if there's any questions or anything from today that, you know, that you're interested in or something that you want us to cover next Monday, please don't be shy. Reach out, email um, at training at ahcpsales.com. The email address uh, there, the training box gets checked on a daily basis. So if you have any questions, definitely guarantee about 15 questions as well. Please feel free, um, reach out, give us feedback, you know, ask questions about products, sales techniques, tips, ideas, you know, we're here as a resource for you. And then we're going to close today with a um, great opportunity that if there's any questions um, or that great opportunity that the purpose of a business is to create a customer who creates a customer. Um, it's a quote by Shiv Shank. And um, he's the VP at Razorfish. And it's words to aspire you, um, to give you a customer such as a positive experience that they're compelled to round up more customers um, to help share that experience with them. So I hope you've all had a great week. Reach out with questions. And I look forward to you know talking to you soon. Hope everybody has a great week and some strong sales. Thank you.